Beef Carpaccio, what's going on? So Beef Carpaccio was originally made by Giuseppe Cipriani at uh, the original Harry's Bar in Venice, Italy. And it was created because a doctor recommended a countess eat raw meat uh, to improve her health. I don't remember what it was for, but the actual dish was named after a famous painter who was known for using red in his artwork. So today we're going to make a classic version of beef carpaccio and then we'll make kind of like a modern alternative take on it and we'll talk about what ingredients you can use. You guys like my water collection? So beef carpaccio is traditionally just these ingredients I have on the left here. You got your beef, arugula, parmesan cheese, salt, pepper, lemon juice, olive oil. Very, very classic beef carpaccio. If you want to kind of add some modern takes on it, We'll make one with capers, mustard, anchovy, and red wine vinegar instead of lemon juice. And I, I don't have horseradish here. Horseradish is also a modern interpretation, but I don't think you would ever add both horseradish and mustard to uh, beef carpaccio. So we're going to prepare two plates, uh, one with the classic carpaccio and one with a modern carpaccio. Okay, so here I have a piece of beef tenderloin. and. The reason I use tenderloin for carpaccio is a similar reason to tartare. It's very easy to work with. It pounds out very easily. It has a, a tiny bit of flavor. A lot of times you'll see people use top round for carpaccio in a restaurant and that's because they have deli slicers. So what you do is uh, you freeze the meat, get it really cold, and then you slice it super duper thin on a deli slicer or with a knife. But uh, the easy way to do it is to pound it out. Uh, first we have to trim, I'm just going to trim the sides off of this and the fat off. You definitely want to trim off the connective tissue and you want a relatively lean piece of meat to do this because we are going to dress it with some fairly fatty toppings. Now we have our trimmed filet mignon. So I'm going to cut some slices, fairly thin. Yeah, you know, so, so since I don't have a deli slicer, and most people don't, I decided to do it this way. And I've seen people use a rolling pin and a hammer uh, to do this. So with a hammer, you know, you just get a nice flat surface, make sure to press the meat together, and then you just pound it out nice and gently. If the meat sticks to the hammer and it's breaking apart, you could put like some plastic wrap over it while you pound it out. And if you want to get it really paper thin, I suggest using the plastic wrap. So, there's one piece. Try the rolling pin too, why not make more of a mess in my kitchen? Oh, that's actually... Rolling pin's not bad either. I think the rolling pin might be easier to get it really thin. Because the rolling pin you can press down, yeah, the rolling pin you can press down really hard and, uh, and flatten it out really well. See how thin I got that with the rolling pin? That worked. And you don't have to worry about breaking this up too much because uh, it's all going to go on a plate. And just the goal is to just cover the plate with the beef. It doesn't have to be whole pieces. So rolling pin or hammer, whatever you have, I mean, you could probably even just crush this with your hands, to be honest. But I'm going to get all of these pieces flattened out and then we'll put the toppings on. All right, I got my beef on the plates. And I just want to juice this lemon. I got these, uh, these organic lemons. And I must say, the lemon juice from fresh squeezed organic lemons is so much better than a lot of the lemon juice I've worked with in a lot of the bars I've bartended in. It really makes a, a, a difference. Product quality. Maybe it's just because I'm used to having chilled lemon juice instead of room temperature lemon juice. Vinaigrette is classically one part acid to four parts oil. So for this first vinaigrette, one part lemon juice, four parts oil. This is a California Olive Ranch, pretty popular, good brand. And just a pinch of salt, cracked pepper, shake this up. You shake it up, the dressing should be emulsified together, 
Now we're going to put some of this, just a little bit, enough to coat the arugula on it. Now we're going to season the beef. So what I like to do is a very tiny bit of salt all over the beef. Just a tiny, tiny bit of Celtic salt all over the beef. And I'll put a, some cra fresh cracked pepper on the beef. Just a tiny, tiny bit of fresh cracked pepper on the beef. And then we take our Parmesan cheese. And the most important thing about this Parmesan cheese, guys, the most important thing about this Parmesan cheese is that it's three ingredients. Organic raw cow milk, salt, and rennet. It doesn't have to be organic raw milk as long as it's raw milk. This is a very, very high quality Parmesan cheese. And then, microplane, we're gonna grate it over the top. And we're just gonna cover the carpaccio in cheese. Now what I like to do is take a little more salt, put a little more salt on top, season the cheese really well. Some more peppers seasoned on top of the cheese really well with pepper. All beef carpaccio is usually served with arugula, so we got to dress the arugula with the dressing, vinaigrette. Now, you, you could put this on the beef too. I like to just leave the vinaigrette on the arugula. You don't, there's no reason to put it on the beef as well. So we'll just take our arugula that's dressed in the vinaigrette. That is your classic beef carpaccio. All right, now for the variation. The variation is gonna differ because we're gonna put a mustard sauce on the beef. So the arugula is gonna get the same lemon vinaigrette that we put on the other one. The mustard sauce is essentially gonna be a vinaigrette with just a few ingredients added. So for this vinaigrette, I'm using a very high quality uh, red wine vinegar from Napa Valley Naturals. I love their products. So one part vinegar. We'll do about uh, four parts oil again, same ratios. And a little bit of mustard. And for the mustard, the only ingredients you really wanna see are mustard, seeds, vinegar, water, and salt. And, and for the capers and anchovies, you know, you could just spread them on the beef. You don't have to mix them into the vinaigrette. Okay, so I'm just gonna dice up the anchovy with some capers. All right, now same thing. We're gonna shake up the mustard, the anchovies, capers, red wine, vinegar, and olive oil. And salt and pepper. Salt, pepper. Now I'm gonna put, I'm gonna season the beef like I did with the other one, which is salt and pepper. We're gonna put this mustard vinaigrette on, on the beef. Put the mustard vinaigrette on, spread it around. And I don't necessarily think this has to be a vinaigrette. I think you could just mix the mustard with some vinegar, anchovies. I'm not sure if you really need the olive oil. Now we're gonna do the same thing that we did with the other one. So we're just gonna grate the cheese on top, cover it with cheese, and then the, the salt and pepper on top of the cheese again. So, or well, pepper. A little bit of salt on top of the cheese. Okay, very well seasoned. And then we'll take our arugula that's been dressed in the lemon vinaigrette and put that in the middle. So now we have a classic, 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 classic beef carpaccio. This is by the book classic. This is modern interpretation. I think I'm gonna like this one more, but let's try them. Guys, I'm on a carnivore diet, so I'm going to try it with the arugula and then I'll spit the arugula out, but I think we have to try it with the arugula just for the integrity of the, the recipe. Here's the bite, guys. I really don't like arugula. I think, I think there's a reason that we don't see a lot of classic beef carpaccio in restaurants anymore. I think there's a big reason a lot of 
modern New York City restaurants are making carpaccios with mustard, with acid, with anchovies because just this beef, this beef with Parmesan cheese and salt and pepper, it's good, but it's not like knock your socks off, you know? So if you guys are on a raw primal diet, that beef with just the salt, pepper, Parmesan cheese is delicious. Get some grana padano, raw Parmesan, whatever it is, it's amazing. Uh, so I'm gonna take the arugula off of this because I know I don't like it. In New York City restaurants, a lot of these restaurants are putting no arugula at all on the top too. I've noticed that. You know, most of these restaurants aren't putting arugula on top of the carpaccios. All the last few carpaccios I've had have not had any sort of greens on top, at least to the classic standard. So here I'm gonna try the carpaccio with the mustard red wine vinaigrette. This is good. This is uh this is like this is what I've been served recently a lot in uh in restaurants I've been at. It's very well balanced. The capers, the anchovy, the mustard, the vinegar, nothing really sticks out. And the parmesan doesn't even really stick out that much. I think the mustard sauce really, really adds to this dish. Super delicious. I think both both versions of this dish people will like. I think the second version is kind of what you would expect. It's something to taste good, you know. Multiple flavorful components of the dish. Um, you know, it's funny. When, when we made the beef tartare, the classic recipe was way better. But in the case of this recipe, the classic recipe does not really have enough fat or acid or like it just doesn't have enough to carry the the food. I think the problem with the classic beef carpaccio recipe is that lemon juice is not acidic enough and there's no real punch, not enough umami in just the cheese. Uh, may, maybe, honestly, I think if I went really overboard with the cheese and the seasoning on the first beef carpaccio, it might have been a little better. But then I, I, I just think I seasoned it plenty though. I like it was really, it was seasoned. The vinaigrette was there on the, the arugula. So let me know if you guys tried this recipe, what you think. Uh, if you guys want to reach out to me uh, for anything, diet consultations, cooking lessons, uh, shoot me an email, frankatefano at gmail.com. Uh, I'll try to post the ingredients in the description. I didn't really do any specific measurements here. Uh, but if you guys would like to support me, Please uh, check out my Instagram, check out my Twitter, uh, subscribe to me here. Um, 